This audio production was made in collaboration with Audible Anarchist. Why I left the PSL, or the DSA, or Socialist Alternative, or whatever. A kid, July 2021. For six years, my sites were always set on spamming out emails and event invitations, optimizing social media engagement, writing press releases and meeting agendas, recruitment, discourse pissing contests. Leftist organizations were the center of my life until the day I burnt out, and I regret the time I wasted on them. Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of formal organizations that do genuinely radical and important things, but that shit just doesn't work for me anymore, and honestly, it sucks that it took me so long to realize this. At the time of my involvement with my former organization, I was only vaguely familiar with some of my friends' projects, yet I felt they were never serious about taking the next step, electing delegates to send to our meetings. I came to dismiss them as lifestylists and anarchists. I lauded the anarchists for their absence from the struggle against gentrification and landlords, even as I heard about the squat evictions and the solidarity attacks that followed, even as I walked through the neighbourhoods where a creative and hostile graffiti culture kept the developers at bay. I made tired jokes about vegan burritos, even as the food distribution centres and groups multiplied across the city without needing the direction of any central committee. I used to treat organising like a try-hard student treats a group project. Other radicals' ideas, activity and efforts were only good if they were useful to whatever campaign I was working on. My friends helped me out here and there, but they lacked commitment to the organisation and would fail to return to meetings after completing the project they helped with. While I was hard at work trying to recruit strangers for the next meeting, or preaching the gospel of the proposition on some trending issue, or educating the masses about the merits of yet another piecemeal reform campaign dressed in the last century's revolutionary garb, my friends were busy growing together. By the time I had finally burnt out of my organisation and started hanging with my friends again, I had become so accustomed to organisational processes that it took me years to repair my relationships enough to begin to see and understand how anarchists organised. At first, the informality felt like a mess. I couldn't keep track of who was doing what unless I was directly involved and needed to know. And that was really difficult to adjust to, especially when I could see projects everywhere, but still didn't really know who might help me find a way in. There was never really any rush to invite everyone, and so I never really knew when things were happening. There were no unified plans to link events into a campaign, or any real pressures to even attend events, really. I often wondered if I should return to the real political work, which obviously had to be elsewhere. But elsewhere still meant within the range of my former organisation's influence. I just couldn't bring myself to go back to that world. When I was a leftist organiser, the movement that I imagined myself to be building was always something exterior to my life, something that took place outside of myself, my friends, and their projects, the spaces that we inhabit. But THE movement isn't elsewhere. Leftist organisers told me the project emerged from the organisation. My friends showed me the organisation emerges between our individual projects. I never want to wiggle my fingers for consensus again. I'm sick of attending meetings instead of just talking and working on shit with my friends. I refuse to be marginalised for questioning the decisions handed down by the party leadership or the coordinating committee or the whatever the fuck jargon is used to disguise hierarchy these days. No, I don't want to join a fucking politician street team. No, I don't want to listen to another boring speech. No, I really don't think trying to convince people that the legacy of Stalin or Mao or any other dead dictator is worth redeeming here in fucking Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the year of the Lord 2021 in the heart of an empire built on stolen land. Are you fucking serious? I wasted years on general assemblies and GBMs trying to force an insurgent network into existence when all I had to do was just start paying attention to what was already going on. Take a second to realise that no party could ever organise all of it into a coherent movement and then take a step back far enough to see that that's actually a good thing. If the alphabet soup of communist parties ever pivoted towards militancy, they won't, but if they did, they'd literally be setting themselves up for immediate repression. Anarchy, on the other hand, is a flawed and centerless constellation of relationships, which is to say, anarchy is built on affinity, trust, and reciprocal knowledge. Pittsburgh anarchist scenes are just as fragmented as the left. It is true that we do struggle to sustain coordination and momentum beyond the intermediate term. Like every movement, anarchy waxes and wanes. I couldn't care less. Any communist or anarchist who believes that revolt in the United Settler States actually depends on the strength of the left is deluding themselves. 
Revolt happens with or without us. So rather than waste time obsessing over the strength of some organisation or ideology's influence in a given region, I'd rather learn more projectual approaches that might contribute to conflictuality. I know some of you reading this are studying this framework as well, and I look forward to discovering your projects, whatever they might incite or strike. To me, it makes more sense for the movement to refer to a circulation of tactics, skills and projects within and between radical social scenes, and that movement sure as hell doesn't have much to do with political organisations that fill up my email spam folder. At the end of the day, I'm still not sure what giving up on the organised left actually means though. What I do know is that despite all our grandiose beef, I'm still going to see the real commies by my side at the barricades from time to time. And in those moments, the fragmentation in Pittsburgh will weigh heavy. But the moment passes, I've finally left a party, and I know what I'd rather be doing. I want to elaborate my search for affinity, and to discover where my projects might collide with yours. Lately, I've come to think that sort of thing is all the movement is actually about, anyway. It's about navigating social life and conflict with the intent to find accomplices through what we do, rather than what we say. It's about negating passivity and reimagining the spaces you inhabit, assessing the possibilities that your every action could open up. It's about understanding the things you do as already being part of an insurgent project. It's about that rush of euphoria that hits when your projects start introducing you to all sorts of punks, plugs, insurgents, accomplices, rebel artists, mentors, lovers, and then collaborating organically. You've never to meet a new recruit ever again. It's about the decisions you make every single day, from the ways you choose to get your food to the people you choose to share it with. A graffiti crew, an urban garden, an anti-fascist patrol, a workout schedule, an electronics repair workshop, a social centre, a variety of accountability models, an addicts autonomous of sorts, an anarchist distribution centre, a weekly prisoner correspondence night, several counter-repression projects and firearms trainings, many attempts at collective living, bursts of short-term direct action groups, a squatter's network and tool share, a dumpster CSA, a successful, although unpublicised, rent strike, a compost pick-up and drop-off site, a weekly poetry workshop, several food distribution networks and groups, a recording studio, a neurodivergent support group, an interactionary study and research group, a be-gay do-crime sex worker crew, a homeless shelter, a traveller kids rest stop, the movement is everything that you're already fucking doing, here, now, individually, collectively. The world is ending. No global revolution is coming to save us. What worlds emerge is dependent on the particular trajectories the collapse will transverse in each region. Empire will survive in the places where workers still prioritise the needs of the techno-industrial economy, be it capitalist or communist, over the needs of the world they inhabit. Elsewhere, anarchy spreads like cracks in the concrete. Anarchy not anarchism, a diverse, decentralised mosaic of the struggles for autonomy, until the land beneath the ruins of the colonial order is reclaimed by a life beyond Leviathan. A filler kid, July 2021. Partially plagiarised from a column that appeared in Filler Volume 2, Issue 1, published December 2019. This has been a production of Audible Anarchist. You can find more Audible Anarchist on YouTube.